I never throw away a screw or a nail unless it's bent so much that I could never, ever, ever use it again. Or if the, the uh, thread, not the thread, the cross got like stripped, you know, that kind of thing. I always reuse it. And um, because I go from one project to a next, and I'm always just taking one project apart to build a better project. Wood and screws are kind of like my Legos, my Lincoln Logs, all that kind of thing. It's just grown up playtime. Now last year I had these beds that I made out of lathe because I had lathe. I got it free from a cabinet maker shop and I had tons of it, didn't have the money to go buy something else. So these are the beds that I made and they're awful, really, really, really awful. So I'm just going to take them apart and then I'll use the wood for something else. I love the cordless options. I have gone through three of these in the last 10 years. The reason that I'm pulling all this up is because anywhere that I don't lay down really thick cardboard, um, I end up having bind weed come through and right now I don't have any cardboard so instead I'm putting down black plastic as an experiment. What I'm worried about is that the roots of the plants won't be able to go as deep even though I'm going to do a pretty deep bed. I want the roots to be able to go down deep and get real dirt. Um, but you work with what you've got and what I've got right now is black plastic and straw bales so it's just what I'm going to do. It kind of looks like I have some more roots for my yellow campaign left here so I kind of think that I'm going to dig it up and go plant it somewhere else. This is my dirt now. After all this mulch has been put on, you see how black it is? I'm gonna show you how easy it is to dig through it. It's a good age, eight inches deep. And my shovel goes right in. This was not the case when I was putting these posts in for the living fence. I was having to move big cobblestones out of the way. Hi, babe. I do. Can I finish planting this so that it doesn't dry out? So I just hit my first rock about 10, maybe 12 inches down. So I'll show you, I'll pull one up if I can get it. These are the rocks that used to be our whole backyard. And that's how long it took for me to get to that first cobblestone this time. The rest of it was open I'm still going to put rabbit manure in this because the actual fertility of the soil is not amazing. But this is my mother wart. And also, I believe these are elecampane roots. That's what I had planted next to it. It could also be comfrey, but I don't think it is. I think it's elecampane. So I'm going to throw those in the bottom because I love elecampane. And here's my motherwort. Motherwort is supposed to be good for heart and also for female troubles, if I remember correctly. Elecampane is for um, deep-seated pain and coughs, deep coughs. So these were in my little raised beds, but the, um, the soil there was potting soil, which doesn't hold nutrition, and also... Um, and also the bindweed was taking over and I couldn't get any water to these guys. I don't have to water them very often, like once a month, but they do need some water and that water was encouraging the bindweed. So I cut her back. And now I'm just gonna put her back in. They're just barely starting to show leaves. And so if I just cover everything back up, they'll just come back up because they have just barely emerged. I think as far as herbs go, motherwort is the best place to start if you have some really um, dry
dry, bad soil because uh, motherwort is very, very tenacious. I have no worries that she'll just come back from this, even though I'm doing a really crappy job. So I'm going to go get some rabbit manure and some water. I'm, I'm going to water her in so that she doesn't have dry spots around her roots. So whenever I transplant anything, I give it lots and lots and lots of rabbit manure, not just a little bit. I give it enough that the rabbit manure is more like a mulch. In my soil, that is absolutely necessary. I gotta show you guys this funny thing. Do you recognize that white thing? What do you think that is? I think Mama Duck has been uh, laying her eggs underneath the rabbit hutch. Yep. And then I think she forgot about it. Okay, so when you're doing permaculture, now eventually the soil will build up moisture and everything will be good and jolly. But if you're starting out with bad soil, you have to water things in and then you mulch. Uh, hay, straw, wood cannot hold moisture in that isn't already there. It doesn't add moisture to the soil, it just holds it in. Now, I know all this dirt looks nice and black and beautiful and everything, but the problem with it is the bindweed. The bindweed comes up and through it. it, it the bindweed doesn't come as long as I don't water anything. But in this regular potting soil, you have to water constantly until they can get their roots down into the actual dirt that holds moisture, because potting soil doesn't hold any moisture. So I've gone through and I've picked out everything that I could find that I knew I had planted here that was a perennial that were surviving. So now, now what I'm gonna do is come through and take the rest of the bed apart and flatten it out so that I can um, put the black plastic over the top. And this is the miracle of having livestock. When you have deep mulch, they'll just come in and look at what you just dug up. They're just curious. Okay, so I said it like this this time. And on the very end, I have some alfalfa. Now the reason that I don't use alfalfa is not because I wouldn't like to, it's because it's too expensive. In our area, it's anywhere from eight to $10 a bale. And so um, these are one to $2 a bale because they're a waste product, a byproduct of wheat. not to be in buckets. When it's in buckets, it's harder to get out.
but it does keep all the urine in instead of having it drain into the soil underneath. So having the buckets does preserve a lot of the nutritional value because it keeps all the dirt, soil, bacteria from starting to digest all that nitrogen.